Colorado Springs, Colorado is home to almost a half a million residents. 65 miles south of Denver, Colorado Springs offers beautiful landscapes, mountain vistas, county parks, and nearby national forests. But this natural setting also places thousands of lives and properties at risk to wildfire. In Colorado Springs, we have a identified 35,360 addresses in our wildland urban interface. And our urban interface covers 28,800 acres. And so because of that population density, we knew that we had a serious threat in Colorado Springs. And on June 23rd, 2012, conditions were so hot and dry that when the Waldo Canyon fire started in nearby Pike National Forest, life would quickly change in Colorado Springs forever. God, Dad, come here, look at this. Holy. And we were across town when the fire started. So we hurried back and then they barely let us in. We had about 10 minutes to get everything out. Take out all these homes blowing southward. Just three days into the fire, a large thunderstorm developed. Winds topped 65 miles per hour and pushed the fire east, forcing it downhill into the city. As smoke blanketed the entire region, more than 30,000 residents and area business employees quickly evacuated. One of the saddest days. During the Waldo Canyon fire, we did have three neighborhoods that were threatened, including Cedar Heights, Peregrine, and of course, Mountain Shadows. That whole street is just gone. We had businesses on very large magnitude from call centers to data research centers to data centers to many other facilities that were in the evacuation area and they had to leave. According to firefighters, the fire moved across the terrain at two miles per hour, blowing embers and igniting spot fires up to half a mile away. A lot of the primary fuels were the houses, so the ignition was house to house in a lot of cases. It really turned into an urban conflagration. Working together, the police and fire departments and emergency management established traffic control points and developed evacuation zones for residents based on the fire's behavior. We had several go bags and pictures and documents and stuff all set to go, so we just had to load it in the car and take off. We had commerce that was interrupted. We had international businesses that were affected for several days. Those corporations didn't know if they could go back. They didn't know if their facilities were damaged. Throughout Tuesday evening and into the night, 345 homes were destroyed. Two civilian lives were lost, and thousands of lives and businesses were impacted. There are several people that go to our church out at Mount St. Francis who lived in mountain shadows, and uh, indeed, 20 years. 20 years. Had it built. their homes were totally destroyed. What unfolded in Colorado Springs was tragic. I don't know what we'll salvage. Yet damage to the city as a result of the Waldo Canyon fire could have been far worse. With limited funding, but a serious commitment to reduce the threat of wildfire damage, Colorado Springs did what many high-risk communities across the country have not. They prepared well in advance of the threat, striving to make their city more fire adapted. 81% of the homes in those three neighborhoods that were exposed survived intact without damage. During the days, a couple different times, the fire did begin to move into the Cedar Heights area. And it hit some of our mitigation areas. And in fact, what we were surprised with was we expected the fire to hit those mitigation areas and lay down. But in fact, in most instances, it hit those areas and went out without any intervention, without any air support. A special Colorado Springs wildfire mitigation unit within the fire department was responsible for the projects that began in 2001. An interactive website was later created to help rate a home's wildfire risk by individual address. The five ratings range from low to extreme. According to Fire Marshal Brett Lacey and Wildfire Mitigation Administrator Christina Randall, developing relationships between residents and the fire department was key to their success. 
Their tagline, sharing the responsibility, was how projects were successfully accomplished. We also heard a lot about personal relationships and trust. And so for the past 10 years, Colorado Springs has been building that trust with the local community, and they've made it their program. Initially, when you heard fire mitigation, it felt like, what do you want us to do? When we put all of that information and all the data that we collected on the website so people could look at that, and they could look at their house, they could look at their neighbor's house, they could then understand some of their neighbors that were a risk to them. That forced them to go next door and have a cup of coffee and sit down with them and talk about what they can do to improve their situation because now they're risking their neighbors. Yeah. Extensive community outreach, collaborative projects, resources and funding, along with a lot of serious planning, also helped contribute to the city's wildfire mitigation success. During the planning process, the city received federal, state and local grants to help with its projects. We have a limited staff and limited budget, but um, with the support of federal funding and grants, we are able to bring resources to the communities. And so people see value in that and they recognize their risk. Over time, there developed a synergy where people began to talk about it more and have a conversation. And that conversation just continued to grow that drove people to action. You'll see out here is that like the scrub oak that I had, I've thinned them and then taken the bottom branches that were down here off to create a distance between the grass area and the top of it so that the flames, if they come along there, they're not going to reach clear up to the top. Well, we trimmed some scrub oak back away from the house and some of the other vegetation and had some people come out and do an assessment for us. We've been pretty active for 10 years. And I think the community deserves an awful lot of credit for the work that they invested in, the monies that were spent, and a lot of credit goes to the federal government for the grants they supplied to enable us to do that work. The city's robust mitigation plan included defensible space, fuel treatment projects, a curbside chipper program, and the enforcement of codes and ordinances, including one that mandates the use of Class A roofing that took effect in 2003. And while it was tragic that we lost the two lives, and it was tragic that we had the damage to 380 some homes and lost, you know, 340 some, the benefits to a lot of the community that still stand and that the homes that did survive and the way that fire was able to move through that neighborhood and not wipe out an entire development stands as a true testament to the benefit of wildfire mitigation. The communication, the work the homeowners did, everybody in that system's approach, doing their part. Key partners work together to address wildfire protection of critical assets such as utilities and water supplies. Our watershed efforts are pretty focused. We have a, a long-standing partnership with the Colorado State Forest Service. Uh, we've got a management plan for uh, approximately 15,000 acres on those properties and every year we, we manage to get about three to 500 acres treated up there doing forest restoration projects and I think that continued direction forward is, is something important for any utility and, and fire department to, to keep in mind. It takes the operation side, it takes the planning side, it takes the cooperation side. All of those things have to come together for a successful event and I think we were all counting on the work that we had done to help us 2012 will be remembered as one of the worst wildfire years on record. Warmer temperatures, minimal snowpack, and increased fuel loads are major contributors to the growing number of wildfires we see each year. The Waldo Canyon fire is a big wake-up call that we need to really focus in on the critical assets all through the wildland urban interface along Colorado Springs and, and seeing what infrastructure we have and it definitely is a priority to this type of an event. Fire mitigation is not doing it one time. You've got to keep on top of it. you got to mitigate, you have to re-mitigate and re-re-mitigate to stay on top of it. I think the big advice is do it. Fire Adapted Communities provides guidance through national resources and programs from a coalition of experts. These resources include community wildfire protection plans, firewise communities, Ready, Set, Go, and many more valuable sources for wildfire safety information. When used together, communities reduce their wildfire risk. Fire Adapted Community's website, fireadapted.org, is an extremely useful tool for all different types of audiences. Homeowners, land managers, firefighters and emergency responders, as well as community leaders. So everyone can learn their role about what they should do to prepare for wildfire and what they can do to help their community prepare for wildfire. 
the thing I found personally gratifying is that after the fire, several of the people have come up and said, hey, we really appreciate what you've done with fire mitigation. It doesn't take one agency, it takes everybody working together. That collaborative effort, that is so important. I think fire adapted communities is a very important approach because in fact, the city of Colorado Springs back in 2000 when we embarked on our mitigation strategies and our wildland fire mitigation, we're basically using exactly the same concepts that this program employs. A big thank you to the Colorado Springs Fire Department for making this success story happen. They've shared everything with us. They've given us important data. They've given us important stories. They've given us their time, especially during a pretty critical time of rebuilding when their resources are stretched. And it's been successful here. It involves all the partners, all of the participators, local cooperators, businesses, homeowners. It's a holistic approach to a very large problem that cannot be solved unless everyone cooperates and collaborates. The Fire Adapted Communities program is supported by a coalition of national agencies dedicated to wildfire safety. For more information, visit the Fire Adapted Communities website at fireadapted.org. <laughs>